In our latest episode of It's Covered, the insurance podcast, we were talking about a video that I was just out making at a local body shop here. And I wanted to give you a little bit of a free preview of that of that video and what, what we were learning there. Uh, the video was made for our Premier Agency Claim training course. Um, and if you're if you're completely new to us, um, first of all, the, the podcast I was just mentioning is a weekly podcast where we talk about um, in, insurance issues uh, uh, from from both kind of a claims and a uh, an agent side of things, and so that that is a free podcast. I'm going to put links of, for that uh, down in in the description. But if you just if you get your 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 favorite podcast catcher, iTunes or whatever it is, and you look up it's covered the insurance podcast, you're going to find it. Uh, secondly. The uh, the packed course is is uh, is a, a set of videos where you know we, we we take the insurance agent through the claims process through the coverages through through how to set up a, a policy uh, policy well so that you know when the customer does have a claim the agent is going to be an exceptionally great resource for the customer and also able to really push forward the claim. Um, and so uh, I'll, I'll put links to that uh, down there. But before before that, take a look at our free ebook, which is uh, Six Insurance Claims Pitfalls and What the Agent Can Do About Them. Because this, this is a free book and uh, all links will be, will be down there. But if you go to itscover.net slash ebook, you're going to find it there. Download the free ebook, and that's going to give you a really kind of bird's eye view of some of the things that the agent can do to solve a lot of the biggest, uh, the biggest points of dissatisfaction in the claims process. Those points that really uh, are, are pain points for the customer that cause them to start looking for other insurance and cause them to be dissatisfied with with our service as insurance professionals. And so that's going to help you a lot. So please check that out. But Enjoy this video. I think it's gonna. I think it's gonna bring you a lot of value. And so, uh, check it out, and we'll see you soon. The car didn't make it. And this is one of the ones about the hidden damage with the fender on the car. You can't uh, see the apron damage on the inside, and it got as far as into the strut tower and wrinkled all inside here. Oh wow. But the main part was the eight hundred and eight eight hundred and fifty five dollar ABS module that was broken. Mm -hmm. That you couldn't see. So this is this this is a total. That's a total loss. Uh -huh. But when it came in, when you looked at the initial photos, you never would have thought it. Yeah. So you open it up and look at the inside. Right. We're actually in the process of painting the inside unit structure of the truck. Mm -hmm. Walking on the car. He's prepping the car now. Oh wow, it's warm in here. Get to about 160 degrees when he flips it on. Oh wow. So we take off all the infrastructure, we'll do this welding and it's clear and mask the car for no overspray. So you don't get any residual. The floor actually sucks the paint while you're painting. It's a downdraft booth, so it actually takes all the overspray from shooting and sucks it through the floor. Oh that's a credit. So we come back and refilters it again, it runs the air back through and sucks down the floor back through the top again. Now, is the, the heat for drying purposes? It is. Yes, sir. He clicks it on. It's got a burn unit, and the heat comes through the top area also. It's like a heater, and it'll warm up at 145 to 160 degrees. Yeah, that was a question I was going to have. It's like, you know, today it's it's, it's cool and, mu and, and muggy outside, and but this is going to make sure that you can actually dry. Inside here, outside, it would be tougher. Like a primer to dry, which is the primer on the car. Yeah. It takes a little longer when it's cold. Those are things that do delay. There's also the cold weather you have and freezing. Side of that quarter panel where the drawing is, I'm going to walk forward. So it's hitting the rear bumper, but you couldn't see the buckle and the body line looking down the black car. You can see a wave and it buckled this quarter. It actually oil can. See that? Yeah. It's got so much pressure from being rear ended, just touching it makes that dent stain look. Huh. And I can push it, it'll come out. Call it oil canning. Press and hold it. And you can see the waves on the corner. And that's going to be a hit the rear. This was like that. You get hit the rear, and you don't see those things. You're looking at the rear bumper. Right. And you look at the corner, the visual damage that you see. 
little bumper reinforcement was mounted on the car. You see we're looking down the rear body panel of the car, and I'll show you. These are the things that you can't see with the bumper on the car. See how all that's rolled in? Yep. This is the rear body panel. All of that's pushed in. If there were, if there were if there's just one thing that you wish that agents understood about car repair, what would it be? Hmm. I guess it would be the supplemental process. Yeah, Without the car coming in. When the car comes in, the customer's under the assumption that everything is here. All the parts are here, we're all ready, and they don't think of the other 50 cars that are here before they got here, right. that are in line. So they fall into the production line and as they come in. So when you go through that process, when the car gets dropped off, it gets dispatched into production. Production then sends it and assigns it to a body tech. The body tech, when he finishes doing what he's doing at that time, he'll start disassembling that car for a visual, more accurate estimate. So that would be our, what they say, the teardown process to uncover the hidden damages. Right. Once you do that, you compose all of that. If you come in with an estimate written by the office or by an outside field appraiser, then we take that estimate, put that in our system, lock it, and then create a supplement so it shows exactly what else was added to your estimate right. when it's outside the field. Right. So then that might take a phone call, 24, 48 hours for that to get dispatched and another appraiser come back out for the approval on right. the supplement or the additional items that are needed. Yeah. So there's a little three-day window of lost time that they're yeah. not really familiar with and they don't understand that process. They think it's just a phone call away and you say, okay, and then we keep going, but somebody needs yeah. to actually see it.